Hiya, it's Natasha and thank you so much for joining me today. Today we are going to be creating a card using some foam rollers to achieve a really nice smooth ink blend. Now ink blending is done lots of ways but a really popular way is to use the um, mini ink blending tools. And of course the ink that you use does have a huge impact on your ink blending but it can be a really difficult thing to get a nice smooth blend. So I purchased these three foam rollers here and these come in a three pack. I've just popped some of my Distress Oxide ink down on a non-stick mat and all I'm gonna do is roll it in the ink a bit and then roll it down onto my paper. This is just some 80 pound Nina Solar white paper and I'm going from my lightest color to my darkest color. And these are a really easy way to get a nice smooth blend, honestly, without trying. I mean, if you are using the mini ink blending tools, it can take it can take a little bit of time because you really the best way to get a smooth blend with them is to build up color really slowly. Um, but as you can see, using these foam rollers, this nice uh, ombre blend here, and of course you don't have to do ombre, it's much easier if you just do one color, but I wanted a little bit of variation. This took me, I don't know, maybe a minute and a half in real time, or maybe two minutes. Um, but yeah, I really like the results that I'm getting. So I've been using this a lot recently. And I'm gonna use this foliage from Elena Crafts and also this thank you die, which has the outline as well. And I did go ahead and die cut these off screen because I just die cut all of the foliage several times over from some plain white cardstock. And I did exactly the same with the thank you. So I just die cut the actual inside words, the thank and the you, three times each. And then I did the outline in some vellum. So to give a little bit of dimension to my sentiment, I'm going to layer up all three of these uh, words on top of each other so all three of the use and then all three of the thanks and that will just kind of make them stand off the page a little bit more and a couple of videos ago I showed a technique where I created a floating frame card without using the really popular uh, product press and seal which is I'm sure a great product I've never tried it myself uh, but I don't have any so I just use some plain masking paper to help me create the floating frame and I'm going to do exactly the same thing in this video so I start off with the plain piece of this happens to be the Gina K masking paper but I'm sure most brands would work and I have cut this down to four and a quarter by five and a half inches just so I know that it will fit my card perfectly I'm popping the actual dies down onto the masking paper. It's basically just a low tech paper and I'm sure many low tech papers would work. And then I'm going to pop my die cuts down, making sure that they have the nice die cut side facing down onto the masking paper. So you kind of have the back of the die cut which will be facing up towards you. This is really important because when we put it down uh, onto our card front, we want the nice side to be facing up. Um, and I guess with the last card that I did, I also added foam tape to that one to give it some really nice dimension. But obviously with this really fine foliage, I have the um, die cuts flat down on the page. And it's up to you what you choose. If you're doing bigger elements like flowers and leaves and things like I did in the last one, it's really easy to pop some foam tape behind them, but not so much with this really fine foliage. I will put links to everything I possibly can find in the description box below. I know I forgot to link the masking paper in my last video, so I'm really sorry about that. Uh, the one with the floating frame, I have fixed that up now and I will also link it down below um, in case you missed it. I am using scissors this time to trim around the outside. Last time I used a larger rectangle die, which works just as well, but with these nice fine die cuts, I can cut really easily through them just using my scissors. So either either is fine, whichever you decide to do. And then just when I was looking at this, I saw a couple of slightly empty spots. So I'm going to add a little bit more and it's always fine to kind of keep readjusting as you go. I have used a smaller rectangle here from this Hero Arts Infinity Dies, uh, the rectangle set. And I've just made the rectangle big enough so it will fit around my sentiment perfectly. And I'm going to place that down 
so that the um, cutting die is face down and it will stick on there. If it doesn't stick perfectly, then I can add a little bit of a low tech tape or something. But this will go through my die cutting machine really nicely because it's just nice thin masking paper. And then once I lift up that inner rectangle, you'll see a nice clean line where it cut all of my die cuts. I'm just checking here to make sure that it measures perfectly onto the front of my card. And then here comes the part that is probably most tedious about it. I don't find it bad at all because it only took me a few seconds. It's really not that bad, but I'm going to use my little glue pen and the glue inside of it is the Ranger Multimedium in the matte finish. And I just use uh, these easy to squeeze glue bottles from AliExpress. So I just put a tiny little bit on each of the little pieces of foliage and that way it'll stick down really well when I adhere it down onto my card. I'm going to pop the card front that I worked on with my foam rollers and put that straight down, leave it for 30 seconds or so and make sure everything is adhered really nicely. So I pressed it all down with my finger and then you just want to gently lift it up. I cut the masking paper with my scissors so that I could kind of follow the frame around and I just found that that was the kind of the most gentle way to go around the edge. And as I said, after giving the glue 30 seconds or so to dry, everything is stuck down really nicely and that masking paper comes off really easily. So I am really enjoying creating these floating frames at the moment. I, I mean, this one isn't necessarily floating because it's not popped up on foam squares, but it's the same technique as I showed in the last video. Just different variations of it, which is always fun to do. I'm going to add some of the liquid glue and add it onto a four and a quarter by five and a half, 110 pound Nina Solar White card base. And then all I have to do is add my sentiment in, which I created earlier. I'm just going to use again the liquid glue to put the uh, inside words onto their shadow and the vellum kind of just helps it again stand off the page a little bit more than it otherwise would. So I do really like how this card turned out. It is a very simple card and didn't take that long to complete at all. Just to help uh, a tiny little bit, I'm going to add the sentiment into the middle and then I'm going to add some little kind of almost white sparkling gems. And I'm just going to place a small few of these around the outside using a little bit of liquid glue to adhere them down. And that will finish off my card for today. I have really been enjoying using these foam rollers to get a nice smooth blend of ink onto my projects recently. So I thought I would share it with you because we all love a good card making hack or something that makes life a little bit easier. Thank you so much for watching today. I really, really appreciate all the lovely comments and that you guys all take the time to write. I appreciate it very, very much. Please come and join our Facebook group if you'd like to share some of your projects with me. I love seeing what you guys have created and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Thanks. Bye.